dream's not gonna be undone. It now exists. And um, your judgment of it doesn't make it not exist. Right. It, it's just like people's putting up boundary for what they want, don't want in their life and then their uh, standards. So it's yeah. like, oh, who's open to things? And then somebody that acts very churchy and, and, and go, you know, like is nonish. And then in the bedroom and behind closed doors, they're all like whips the and chains. They're so, the worst. They're uh, the worst. Because <laughs> they don't allow that out. So it's like a freeing effect. Um, uh, mm -hmm. So there's like integration and uh, ways to resolve stuff. And most people, a lot, the same thing with emotions, they, they let it build up until it explodes and then it just takes over their sovereignty and they can't control themselves. And, and then when they feel they, oh, I forget what it's called, um, a post nut clarity. They like, after they, they get through it, they feel ashamed and all like, oh no, why did I do that? And then they're like, like a whole different personality. And it's like, yeah, it's like different aspects to our consciousness. And sometimes there's a, a entanglement and force behind these that are other than ourself, such as abusers from this life, past lives, and even people that have experienced astral rape from different entities like succubus incubuses and, and negative demons that are over a charge over lust and different kinks there's di there are different demons for different things uh and that doesn't and just because people are into something that doesn't necessarily mean it's that but a lot of the time it is if it's going against your free will if you're not able to control yourself even when you've challenged yourself to be uh to take the reins of it and it's like oh my god it's just so horrible because like men have this like more than most people you know than women where they have this thing where it there's a trigger in their mind every seven seconds to think about sex or in a thought stream and it's like a buildup of trickle trickle uh sexual energy uh lust that builds up builds up builds up from all these attachments from what i just said with this life past lives etc and the the culture that is constantly wanting to program us with sexual orientation and us not being shielded to that and a lot of people have targeted uh testicles or targeted ovaries and they they become haunted and, and then at the will of some, something else uh and then they uh especially if they go on porn sites and other stuff uh without shielding and there's ways to deal with that in a magical way and, and sacred sexuality and being able to retain yourself and then getting detached from that but it's for most people they're getting dominated by something else uh and then taking down a stream to uh figure out you know go after what they're triggered into getting uh, pleasure and excitement from and not everything works and the, the more they go down that road it, there, there's something that builds up a pressure on them that closes them off from getting satisfaction from easier more acceptable things and then they go down a, a, a dark rabbit hole of desires that uh you know less and less people accept. right you get to the point where you need somebody to pour milk on you and you gotta have two midgets coming out you gotta have like <laughs> i i i have met someone that talked to me and they were like midgets and all kinds of stuff i mean it's like oh you need to have somebody step on you with some slight shoes and and then it's like wow like they've been I don't know. They've been pulled into something that, and, and it's like, wow. Um, what there, there's such this strange thing because there's this level of people who are like unable to express themselves sexually at all to people who have gone so far and so dark, and then there is, I don't know. We're we're all out here. I, well, I think that's what makes they can't uh, last long and just like overcome to anything. Yeah, and there's a balance with that, right? Yeah, it, this is a difficult, not even a difficult subject to talk about, but it just, uh, it's, it's difficult to understand, it's difficult for people to understand the trap doors that they've gotten themselves locked into. But there's always a way out. So there's always a way out. It. It's just the, the, the will to want to, and then start it mostly has to do with the sacral and the solar plexus chakra the sacral has to do with uh emotions dream all creations of your life and, and creative force and sexuality senses and and you know birthing and all that and then uh, have to do with your sexual organs and, and then the anchor of your masculine feminine your inner child uh, etc and then dealing with all the trauma 
uh, of what they're internally asking for and what filing system holds the trauma to and give it what it needs and doesn't necessarily mean engaging in sex it could be like meditating and holding the the ovaries or the testes and then uh uh shrinking down the big ball of lust and the darkness and transmuting and giving it love and uh detaching any negative entities that go back to that and then going back through your life of all the the situations the trauma of where that went in and closing those back doors so that those external desires don't have power over you as well as like past relationships the entanglements with those and uh the triggering from their sexual you know uh interactions and then it can you know as a cycle continuing um so like gaining regaining control of yourself it takes time and not judging yourself and um being a- accepting and loving to yourself because a lot of the block to the cycle is shame it blocks creative uh force it, it blocks your creativity and, and so that big ball of shame loving that and shrinking that down and uh facing it as and if it's okay and and accepting that part of yourself and then being able to go through uh that darkness to the light at the end of the tunnel um after you've resolved each one of those containers of trauma that we put into little boxes that build up and make it easier to get triggered later and later and yeah uh, and then as you open that back up you're able to experience pleasure in everything and not be able to Mm. funnel down a tunnel of something that may not be acceptable to everyone and even if it is you know there's there's going to be people for you so uh, and then you can find a partner for that pathway to help each other to uh either go farther down or up up rise up out of it and then uh you know that can be very uh unifying with those people um it feels like a relief to hear you say that that no matter what how they go down the path that if they want to get out of that they can and they can find relief in it but again just like we said with the ego and other aspects of ourself it just requires giving it love and nurturing it and and letting go of this um this way that we like to humiliate ourselves and give us, we like to give ourselves these hurdles. Like if you do this, then we can do that. And then if you don't do this, then you're bad, 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 bad. And so it's crazy the way that we are just constantly trying to find ways to punish ourselves and judge ourselves. But we have so um, never learned how to really like love ourselves, accept ourselves and show ourselves compassion. So that it was like a relief when you said that like oh it's like oh good they can they can get help <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and everyone out there no matter what you've done no matter what you've looked at no matter you know all the the lust and influence and things to do that you can accept about yourself i accept you for who you are and i know why it is the way you got into that that, that situation and there's a way out there's a way out for you and you know even if you want to continue that path you know i still accept you there's like purposes there's even ways you know there's this this concept called pornomancy which i'm kind of detaching as much as i can from porn but i don't like you know i used to because i didn't have a father growing up so i I got into it so it's like uh you know i mean we can all say like hey we watched porn because i'm gonna tell you the first (laughs) time i watched porn I, i probably wasn't even five years old okay but yeah, i have older yeah. brothers and they had magazines my older brother had um banana penis lotion in his drawer and i remember he called my sister like grape ape he used to like the joke i said evidently your fucking girlfriend is the ape because you're the one with like the banana dick spray so um i'm coming from a place of where you guys like i've seen porn since i was five magazines since i was five i would go different places where people were at work and be like putting in a tape and oh it's porn and i was well under 10 years old and very well acquainted with the word cunnilingus and fellatio so i'm not gonna judge you know what i mean like you know sometimes you need a little motivation sometimes but then it's like the, the you know there's that point between um you know what 
kind of things you're watching versus, you know, the intensity, the age of the people, the, you know, the level of abuse being exhibited exactly. and whole big doors. So, and your ability to even say that out loud, I am grateful that you're like at that level of honesty with yourself that we, you know, and here we are, let's just Let's just be honest, y'all. We we doing shit, y'all. So we can be spiritual, <laughs> but we know we do shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and that's part of that lower self desire. So like, people can be very spiritual and, and life experience that, that, time that allows us to help stories. others. That life experience that allows us to help others. Like if I've never if I've never experimented with marijuana, with crack, cocaine, then I can't really talk to somebody who is struggling with that. Exactly. Right. And then you can reach them deeper than other people can and you can bring them out of that darkness. Same thing. Yeah. You have it's, some comments though. The yeah. Dom said, I feel so good listening to you, bro. <laughs> and um I'm glad us was talking about her mom was like totally cracking up, but it's only because it's like, oh, this is a, actually a relief to be able to be like, huh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. So and I'll let you finish what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah, uh, transmute that shame and turn it into, and, and lust, um, you turn shame into creativity and the empowerment of the sac uh, sacral. And lust, uh, you can, uh, it's a, like an implosive force and it's like, uh, it uh, tracks the thing that, the, you know, usually the origin of the lust or like old exes or um, uh, an entity or uh, that, that's trying to manipulate you to go down a pathway that's they're trying to determine to lock you out of to be shameful so that you don't go public or you don't become president or you don't change the world in different ways uh. so, uh, so this is like a method to my my method for detaching from porn is like figuring out what uh is the triggers and what uh is overloading where the lust is coming in uh it, you know i i would like track back all my exes that had like these entity because they're most of them aren't spiritual unfortunately and so that uh they're they have these entities attached to them and they overload them uh and you know women are really good at uh projecting lust to to gain uh attr attraction and attention so that, and then uh, males like you know and uh, then saying that women are good at tossing that shit around and being like i don't know what happened and you're like <laughs> what the fuck and then like the guy is the bad guy but we gotta stop playing games because whatever we want to talk about toxic masculine and toxic feminine let's fucking yeah. stop playing games and yeah, I'm going to say it straight, we just be doing shit, okay? We be doing shit. And, you know, even when it came down to Trump and him saying um, he grabbed him in the pussy, he was, yo, he, he was, what, a millionaire, billionaire? Plenty of people sat on his lap, let them touch his, touch their junk because they thought they was getting some money. And then all of a sudden, everybody turned around and was like, oh, my God, I can't believe he said that. Come on, stop fucking playing. Like, people don't get married for money. Like, people don't drop it like it's hot just so they can have some place to stay. Women actually act like they have no sexual desire at all and they're fucking faking it a lot of times. And so I'm it's not like I'm like against women. I'm just I'm just like as a representative, can we just be honest real quick? Like we don't put out vibes all the time. Why do we wear what we wear? Why do we do what we do? I even like watch those girls that have the like the um those workout pants. Bitch, you're not working out and you got on workout pants. And the workout pants actually have like an elastic thread that goes up your ass crack. What the fuck is that for? And I kind of like look at people and I'm like, what? what? But, but, if magic, about your ass, but if someone says something about your ass, you're like, oh my God, like, really? Come on. That booty you know? magic. Put the booty magic on you? Yeah, yeah. Booty magic? yeah we, we got like this big, one big wand and like women got... You know the the the, the one. They got four of them, like one, two, three, four. Yeah, you got all. You got all, yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, you know, men men can do like a thing with you know their uh, achieving muscles too. So you know, but uh, I actually uh, have a little bit of this sometimes. Both the masculine and feminine, and that beauty, because uh, beauty is more than just uh, 
you know, image, it's like this energy that you release from the sacral that uh, promotes the emanation of joy and uh, um, bliss and uh, happiness Ooh. when you look at it, you feel into it, or you receive it with any of the senses. Uh, and, and the same thing with sexual attraction. There's a lot of methods and ma uh, sexual magic uh, that people use in both light and dark that uh, I will <laughs> see and experience and, you know, th being thrown around to gain power. And, uh, yeah, manipulation uh, can come in many forms. Two things. Um, uh, one is... Sabrina said, how do you release past lovers' energy? Um, and I'll have to think of the other one. Why you you go ahead and say that one? Okay. Uh, so there's you know a, a light uh, and dark method, and it's not exactly dark saying it's just like uh, or I could say it better in like um a meditative, non-sexual way to do it, and then a sexual way to do it. Um and, you know, when you're dealing with it, a lot of people don't have time to face uh, their sexuality all day and they're working nine to five. So uh, it, it's and it's very understandable why people have this energy uh, in the say from build up more and more and more until it explodes and it takes over and they got to do their thing. So uh, and they don't have all the time in the world to uh, put all this energy towards detaching from their exes, detaching from the succubus incubus grid, detaching from all this influence from our media uh these triggers in their in uh in their mind that like come up to you know have them thinking about this thing all day in like one aspect of their mind or you know in the, like as a kid they called the spank bank um <laughs> i love that one <laughs> so so my my thing for like detaching from porn yeah. and other people is like tracking back who it is that is attached that's bringing in that and a lot of times it will be exes so i won't talk about that um so the the spiritual uh the meditating method is you can meditate you can either lay down or um sit up uh and do it where your um knees are lower than your hips so that you, you don't get like restless leg syndrome and it, like this falls asleep and then you have to get up so you can be there long periods of time if you're a woman you can hold the back uh, where your ovaries are. Those are the most targeted areas as well as, you know, where uh, the area is. And uh, um, give it love, attention, focus in on it emotionally to the center and um, breathe deeply, full in, out, out and, and every once in a while hold it. Uh, and excuse me, geared towards transmuting the overwhelm and the lust and all the negative energy that it attaches to. All, all these dark energy um, entities, they don't really have much power over people unless, except over the dark parts that we hold within. So when we release and resolve those, they barely have any power. Like if we release all our fear, they don't really, they can't really attach to much of anything except the, the dark parts that we hold in, in ourself of compressed trauma. So as we resolved our shadow, then that has less power. Um, and, and with male, they hold, you know, good to hold the testicles and, and de-haunt that and, and shrink down the, the lust. And, um, you know, so that's the method. And so holding and, and breath work and giving it attention, because a lot of times it needs deep attention. Uh, and... <laughs> so I think she's looking at my face because at one point, I think, Marvel, you brought this up, that men have more nerves in their nipples. But women have more nerves in their vagina, right? Yeah, they have 27 more nerves in their nipples than we do. Okay, so that, number one, does not make more sense. Why women got so much nerves in their vagina, but yet women are having, like, way less orgasms. But, but then someone else is saying how they had multiple nipple orgasms when they were having their experience. This is a man saying how he had actual nipple orgasms. I've never had a nipple orgasm, but that no like, comment. Let me know Just more about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll have to try try it, you know, when I get there is such to try as it. nipple orgasms. Yeah, I've is. never it's heard a male describe this before. So. And a foot orgasm, and then somebody else wants to know what month were you born in December? Me? Yeah. 
Oh, I, I was born in uh, February, so I'm Aquarius. Um, oh is, my God, you're an Aquarius. Okay. Yeah, we nipples we, we get that water sensitive. flowing. This nipple thing is very big, Sean. I'm just trying to say you got a lot of nipples. No, oh, sorry. I, I you know, give you got to give the nipples attention. They're, they're, they're very, very important. I people, believe people it. People want to foreplay. People need and to do you foreplay. Guys, that's, that's 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 a woman, once a woman has a baby and she breastfeeds, you got to give more application to the nipples, okay? I'm just going to put that out there. But anyway, okay. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And that, that goes into the foreplay stuff because uh, people just, like, want to press a button and it get the orgasm done. And it's, like, as quick as possible. And that's not good. That uh, doesn't I mean, even sound okay. good to me. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, for anyone, that's not. Uh, if they've experienced other things, it's not. It's not good. Um, it's, you got you got to build up. It's like uh, there, when you do that, it's like you barely build up any energy and then it's an explosion. But when you really give it time and you make a really big ball of energy, then it affects a lot. And you can have a heart. Heart orgasm is like the best thing ever. Multiple orgasms. Woof. Wow. Males have it too, but it's it's not. You gotta you gotta get really good and slow and take your time uh, and and it's like building up uh, a bomb so that it just explodes and it will affect the universe. Um, so that's sexual magic, especially when you you put it towards an intention. Like people have uh, make these sigils and uh, that that mean an intention, like manifesting for their career, and they look at it right upon orgasm. That's a, a good thing to do. Um, do people write it down, put it on a paper, drink it, eat it, and drink it? <laughs> I, I mean, I I've saw a whole things. thing where both people, they come together and they let each other know what their intentions are, write it down, and then one person, like, eats it, and, like, they go all out. But, I mean, I don't think it's all probably necessary. So, like, it, Yeah, it's not all necessary, but I've seen things with that. Uh, I'd say the biggest thing to, and it's hard, because, like, when you're having an orgasm, you don't want to do anything. You just want to <laughs> So it's like hard to focus on any one particular thought. But that's hold on, 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 Oh yeah, the original question uh, was like, "How to detach from?" <laughs> we went very good, good, but it's a good, good subjects. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you, yeah. Give it time. You gotta, you gotta build that up because the, the nipples are like knobs for that machine. You gotta learn all the switches and and uh, um, you gotta get it feeling. Uh, anyway, so to detach from ex lovers. Um, there's a lot of situations to it. Um, it's so loving detachment. You can do uh, there's a mechanism of an ability where you pulse from the heartbeat, loving detachment and bubbles that push things away faster than they can attach. Uh, so you got to learn that you got to like train, you can transmute lust into sexual empowerment and resilience. So like mm. being able to prevent uh, being uh, overtaken by lust it, as you transmute it while also being more attractive to others as you transmute lust. If you just overcome the lust, it, it doesn't make you attractive. And, and some people, and especially if you have unresolved things, people can feel that negativity and they get repulsed by it. So it can, you know, the, people, the people that have that. Yeah, it repels, it repels. Um, okay, so yeah, so you, 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 that activity, I, I showed the, the one for the night, nice one that's not sexual, or you hold it and you breathe and you, you shrink it down and uh, you attach it. Um, there's also the method where you engage, you know, in your, your, uh, your magic wands and, uh, <laughs> um, Masturbate. sure. Whatever, okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I was like, if it's going to be on YouTube, I don't know what words I can use. Oh, I don't even know. I heard them saying S-E-X the other day. I said, we got to do all that. Like, really? So you can have sex. So they can drop the in bomb anytime they want. So I'm not sure why we got to hide sex. It's just ridiculous what's going on. I know, right? <laughs> but YouTube's doing their, their nanny state thing, and I hope there's other options. Yeah, so you can either engage with another partner, and they can, like, work together to uh, um, detach from old lovers and, and expand each other this uh connection or you can do it by yourself um 
I'd recommend not engaging with porn because that then goes into an entanglement thing. And there's a lot of entities attached to these people and places and creations uh, is the whole haunting area. Unless you're really powerful at the de exercising, detaching, capturing, uh, banishing to other quarantine realms, these entities, then you're mostly going to be overcome with something and then adding to a problem. But there are, there are people that resolve stuff through porn so i'm not throwing it out entirely and there's there's a pathway to it and i am accepting to those people that go through that and I, i'm here for you and i can help you if you need to talk about it um that's awesome and i thank you because we're joke we're we're laughing but this is so real um yeah the succubus and i don't know is anybody out there you, everybody knows what cunnilingus and fellatio is i'm not being flagrant <laughs> but i just saw a statement and i was like Cunnilingus, that's um oral on a woman. Fellatio is oral on a man. And I'm I'm being reiterated. And the whole reason is because I learned this before I was 10 years old. I'm telling you, I learned these words. I've had someone tell me, oh, it must be jelly because jam don't shake like that. And this man said to me, he said, uh, do you like cunnilingus or fellatio? And it just, to talk to a little kid and try to trick him into a question and say that, like, yeah, we're over-sexualized as a culture and we over-sexualize kids. And I do believe our school system is trying to sexualize kids by teaching them shit they don't need to know at an extremely early age. So I don't necessarily say things to be flagrant and just to be funny, but we need to know what we're talking about, like POS, parent over shoulder, and all the different acronyms that kids use on the computer. Because as a parent, like when I was pregnant and I was learning about kids getting kidnapped and things like that, I was learning about those things because I was like, oh, wait a minute, I got a little person coming into the world who is now 16 and he don't want to hear anybody talk about sex. He's like, oh, save it. He's 16 and he don't want sex education. You know, I think we're forcing a lot of pe kids to learn about stuff way ahead of what they're ready for or what they even want. And um, some of our kids are asexual. Absolutely. Agree <laughs> Figure that out. They're asexual. They don't want anything to do with sex. And so pushing it and promoting it and shoving it in their faces with every fucking sitcom or with textbooks when they're in the fifth grade you know, that, you know, I don't know. Here it is. I said while we were at the conference, this is why aliens be abducting us because because we're fresh and we're raised to be fresh. We're like harvested fresh, okay? There's an agenda behind even over-sexualizing us. So I don't know how much more you want to talk about that because I did have a, another question for you. Hmm, hmm. Sure. You, yeah, you, yeah, let yeah. It, you let it all out? Yeah, all these thirst traps, like getting in our uh, thirst traps. I love stay, that word. Stay strong, kings, um, and, and women, uh, the and queens. So, yeah, I'd agree with you completely. Uh, innocence is a big thing. Like the innocent inner child is the place of miracles in our solar plexus. It's the unlimited self. It's un um un uh, it can create within the dream unlimited unli wise and and infinite wise. There's a spark of infinite that we're connected to as children that's this this big power within us and uh as we go through life there's a meat grinder of a world that beats it up and takes it away and takes away our innocence and um fractals it down and inner child work is that thing where you can send healing back in time to those times before the wound and we can pr uh, protect and heal and safety and love and uh, healing and prevent the wounds from uh, happening and prevent the stealing of that so that our inner child is as strong as possible and the miracle tech is as strong as possible so we can make a huge impact in the world and a lot of predators go after that especially because there's a cycle of predation uh, that's been put onto them of like thousands of beings going back that uh, are continuing a cycle to drain uh this miracle energy and this dark miracle predators that are like some of the peak uh apex predators on the planet anchored into different elite um and they pass down the cycle of abuse to their kids and other um, beings uh that then makes them seek out others and then take to take that um 
So there's the wholeness uh, pull chain that needs to happen to the whole collectives of all these beings and, and uh, for ourself when we're, uh, you know, detaching from uh, old love interests too, because sometimes the our exes are haunted and they have entities around them and during acts and events there's or abuse or uh harming or arguments there there's some wounding going on and especially like with heartbreak too there's events where entities will come in during that trauma and take parts of us and they'll take them off to a distance uh steal energy from them harvest from uh you from a distance as well as dump negative emotions and energy and influence onto you from that distance so we have to like part retrieval, soul shard retrieval, power retrieval, all, a sexual body retrieval, all those parts back to ourselves, And it's um, not easy to do because those entities and the chain of abuse and entities going back of haunting wherever that came from, don't want to give up those parts because they lack it themselves. Uh, and so they'll keep sending more things after us unless you, which I have a product on my website, psionicleague.com in the membership section called wholeness meditation one that will, t and two is good for this too, a meditation two, to where to teach people how to regain all their parts back in meditation. And if you want it resilient, where the entities that went after you don't come back, you have to get help them get their wholeness back too. Oh, wow. As the same thing with the the, the exes, because oh, and all the entities attached them, and sometimes they're really e the entities are really evil. So you got to like send them to quarantine realms and and capture them. And Earth has to hold onto the parts because if you just give them their parts back, then um, th they'll get it stolen again. So it has to be given to them in a way that they can hold on to it resiliently and, and protect it. Uh, but then they don't come back to you anymore because they're not craving that same thing. Um, and then you, you can lovingly detach from them. So that whole scenario would be in, in like, you can either do it in the, the nice meditation way, or you can, you know, which understandably no judgment and shame with people that have to do it because they, you know, nine to five people don't have time. So that they get overwhelmed and they have to do it in that time and they get, you know, I gotta, I gotta take care of this. So, uh, you know, if you, you masturbate, then you can, as long as you do it with detachment and you're like, you can read into who's still attached to you in exes and people and entities and then use a loving detachment from them and pulses uh, to where the energy that you build up from it in creational force and the orgasm uh, detaches you in all the ways they're entangled with you. And because um, during that time, uh, not just anything gets you going. So you can't just like think of anything and, and as well the the lower uh, the ego and the lower will won't put up with that for too long other if you try to like do a boring thing then it will build up lust enough to where it's it takes you off track from that and then puts you back into like porn or something so you have to do something exciting uh which will go uh, then so that there's like a build up to light excitement but a lot of people get mm. cut off from that. So they have to engage with what they can dark. feel, which is usually the dark excitement, um, which would go into not looking at porn, but in like having a mask and looking into your mind and envisioning scenarios. And it usually goes back to an old relationship or events of entanglement where a really haunted, like with succubus person or, or incubus person that entangle with you either they actually had sex with you or they had a fantasy while interacting with you and they set up an entanglement with your sexual body dreaming body astral or what uh, mentally in their mind as a thought there's varying layers of entanglement they had something that they a part of them wanted to do either it, them in consciousness their shadow their ego or whatever an entity around them uh and the goal is to then like see that scenario play out because it, it that will give you excitement and it will there the part of them that's entangled with you that will also do a thing but as long as your intention is to love and detach um uh, with the energy then it won't be like uh those people that masturbate to an ex and, and then the ex feels it which i i don't r recommend um it's more about detaching from them so that they, they also benefit like in a 
freeing up and getting their parts back kind of thing from the entities and you detaching resolving uh, the haunting scenario that's my my preferred method to get off of porn because otherwise if you're doing something boring then th there's an altar that will build up with that because it's not getting uh the pleasure that it needs and then um going into uh where if, if you can get rid of all attachments and all, get all your parts back they have less and less power over you and you can <laughs> then track back track any back other any scenarios other oh, uh, i get an echo uh, in a moments of entanglement and start closing those back doors so they have less and less entanglement and that, and you can figure out if they keep coming through like dreams or astral or um, uh, a connection to the sexual organs and then uh purify that with the energy that's coming through and transmuting it and then yeah with the uh, orgasm and each time you do it you get more powerful because it's in in a pure kind of sacred way um and then anytime you know and there people that do watch porn there's like ways to resolve it and dealing with the shame and other stuff i i recommend if you you got an entity that come in and it overtook the mind and really uh, overwhelms the person with lust and stuff. Uh, you know, whatever you're, you're going to do, because, you know, unsovereign at the moment, so no judgment. Afterwards, go take a, a shower, hot, cold, hot, cold over your crown and, uh, you know, the sexual organ area. And, uh, like, freeze, it freezes, the cold water freezes everything attached uh, and the entities and stuff. And then you can send those and banish those away. And then the hot will, uh, after you freeze it all up, uh, slush it off and then it releases. And then um, also like take care of everything and build up purity energy with love and compassion and kindness and uh, excitement and uh, doing something that you love. And uh, um, yeah, you know, in, in the mode where you're gearing up to try to maintain yourself in strong, resilient strength of will so that you can the next time something tries to overwhelm you to get you back in that headspace you uh have a stronger uh defense against it and you you pick a plan you can make even a list of like all the scenarios of like oh i don't want to you know go into that mode anymore what's the 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 bad things about it and what's the good things about um being strong in my will because when we flip into an altar it's we forget about everything that we would have in a normal state of mode so it's good to have a reminder of that so that you can stay strong in your being because it's it's like a whole nother animal and beast takes over for some people that and was a lot they catch, and more sovereign they get the more easier it is to maintain yourself and then you can be strong in your energy and you don't get right. triggered by anything thirst traps don't work anymore and uh yeah the succubuses and the incubuses can't do anything um so th there there's a way out and you you can get strong with and resilient with all of this it just reminds me of the story about the two wolves and it's like the one that's stronger is the one that you feed so the dark wolf or, or the you know the light it just depends on which one you want to feed and if if you do um exercise these muscles because it, it's strengthening and building these muscles in one area or the other so if you want to detach from that and then uh there, there were some comments going on in there and i don't want you to talk about it but i'm about to tell y'all okay um dom made a, a statement about women and yeah there are women who really they want to be pounded and they want to be like thrown around and they want to be he, he was talking about over sexualized women and and i think someone took it away but yeah it's true there's women out there that are like they want men to be like walking penises that don't really have feelings and then there is certain porn and i noticed that um porn with black males versus porn with white males they do make black males in porn very animalistic and very um it's very different in the way that they're having sex and the way that they treat the woman in that in that sense situation that is very um it's more abusive and it's more 
detached and it's more about basically like beating somebody up and throwing them around and I don't mean punching with a fist but you know just like ah you know like just kind of banging it out it's yeah it's it's fucking different it is and and it's made like that for a reason and you know that is all made for you to get your own attachments and to release you know your soul over to these fucking entities that are there to enslave you and turn you into some fucking sex slave type animal and like he said it, it's all about like you know just this horrible level of miscommunication in a way just on how you communicate with yourself and your body and with these other people and it's just there to take advantage of you it's been three hours doesn't feel like it to me <laughs> well, I like I like to ask you guys what you think uh toxic feminine is as well and that, that that's a good transition with what you're talking about and what what they desire and again no judgment on the people that with what you're just talking about uh because you know there's a pathway for that and there's a reason yeah. why that's showing and it's it's you know there's a negative aspect of porn but there's a the good aspect of porn it shows a, like a roadmap and tree of all the different concepts of our consciousness that like people are experiencing so that people can discover and learn from it later and then dig their way out but of course you know there's the negative aspect so what what do each of you think is the qualities of toxic femininity i didn't even finish toxic mac masculinity but i can also go into that too anybody muted i know one thing okay go ahead marvo no okay. okay that's my cue okay so toxic femininity um i would say it's a lot like what i said before dom trying to dominate what people do um sorry my friend <laughs> my friend's making me laugh right now um but uh, it also is, you know, being emotionally unavailable or maybe too independent and too uh, possessive. Um, jealousy comes to mind. Um, thinking that, you know, you have ownership over somebody else victimizing <laughs> yeah that and um like dom was it dom that was saying just over sexuality and using it wrongly um yeah i think those that kind of covers my thoughts oh and manipulation with so yeah that's my thoughts on that. Terry? Well, I, I'm just going to add that there's a lot of that, that victimhood, but that martyrdom, being a martyr as well, is like, look what I've done for you. <laughs> and um, then there's also the ability that, that snipiness, you know, that digging and digging and digging that you see people do and you know this isn't good enough and that isn't good enough and it's just you know it's it's sort of like and 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 the gossiping that that goes on between you know I, I, that that's that's a, a real feminine trait where i shouldn't say the real feminine trait but it's you know like there's that gossip and the judging and and you find that right away is like oh well look what she did and look what she did and look you know it's always that 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 judgmental part as well that um um that's there you know and how they'll they'll look at at different people and why is she wearing this and why is she doing this and why did she act that way um and it, women can be their worst enemies too well said and, you know whether it's ma male or female that they're judging but it, they, they'll they'll do that a lot any more you want to say erica on that? well i mean 
it just leads me to think that uh, whatever you are, if you're out of balance, if you're over sexual, you know, I have friends that like lick their lips. They constantly lick their lips and they kind of like rub their body like the whole time. And I don't even know if they know that they fucking do it. Right. And they're like, Ooh. and then they're like in shock when something happens or goes down and you're like, yeah, you've been licking your lips like for 30 minutes. Okay. So <laughs> there's, there's that. So there's like, when you're overly sexual, you're overtly sexual, but then you're like, Oh my God, deer in headlights. Okay. Then there's, you know, there's these women that like want men to be like a walking wallet or a walking penis. So I talked about that before because they're like money, 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 or they're like, Ooh, big dicks and dick, dick, dick. Everything is about dick. And so, you know, cause I, I really honestly see, I mean, I was in college ever since college. I've seen a lot of women that they have sex so much. If you ask them if they had an orgasm, they have fucking never had an orgasm. They don't even know what an orgasm is. Okay. And they're toxic as fuck because they're trying to have sex with every goddamn body. Probably because they've never had an orgasm. Okay. Then there's, um, there's these, you know, damsel in distress that need to be saved. And it's the woe is me. And they're throwing all their problems on other people. I just think wherever way it is, if you're, if you're too much on the left or the right and you're you're not able to balance in the middle and be comfortable with yourself, but you're kind of like just throwing all your problems out there and confused and just, you know, like a woe is me, I still see that as being a toxic feminine because it's still another form of manipulation where you're trying to use other people as a vehicle for you to get the things that you want. Um, so either you're gonna beat them into submission or you're going to guilt them into submission, or you're going to sex them into submission, <laughs> or yeah, you know, it's just, you know. And somebody wrote that porn is witchcraft, but to me, all forms of manipulation are witchcraft. If you're pulling the strings on anybody to do things that you want them to do, then it's fucking witchcraft. So I don't know. My definition of toxic feminine is just it's a lot of people because <laughs> I, I guess I don't limit it <laughs> it's like bitches are just toxic <laughs> men are toxic but I mean I just I see the sides of both of it where I see women are toxic men are toxic people are toxic when they're unhealed and they're just walking around trying to change and fix everybody because they have no worth except for if they're fixing everything for everybody or they have no worth, so they have to have someone else constantly tell them what to do all the goddamn time and fix all their problems for them. So I don't know. It might be just bitches with screws missing. Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> people with screws missing? And, I, and, you know, I use bad words sometimes, but yeah, people with screws missing. And they always, you know, it always requires someone else. They cannot stand sovereign on their own and function and just, be, you know, just be in your space and be okay with you. How about that? Beautiful. Uh, all of you like preach. That's right. Uh, if you put the three of us together, we're like this awesome, like Voltron figure. If you put us <laughs> and we dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Booty robots. Yep. Uh, yeah. You brought up a great point with that too. Um, people, a lot of people are attracted to toxicity and are like toxic. And there's like people on TikToks, like, uh, here's your toxic pill for day. How, how to be toxic as fuck. And, and it's like, it's like, there's an industry for that. It's like interesting. Um, that I think that a lot of this goes back to a wound with fall of Atlantis where, you know, a lot of the authorities were taken over and, uh, th uh, th these authorities for uh, what attracts different people uh, has to do with that. Like both men and women, a lot of them are attracted. The seventy percent of like what is the attractive and what causes the butterflies in the stomach that like loving anxiety type of thing is toxicity. Um, it, it's like the roller coaster of emotions. If, if they're too boring and stable, it doesn't cause the, those those butterflies. It, so there's like a, a thing to it that they can be 
you know, I, I think there's like used to uh, expand the DNA pool of toxic, you know, anchored in predators to humans to expand like their uh, success in carrying on children. But there's like ways to transmute then bring it to light and balance the two so that people are empowered in both light and dark. Um, and, and to finish on the toxic masculine traits, um, I was like looking at, you know, it's like not open, uh, closed off, um, misogynist. Uh, and then uh, when the, uh, I, I kind of like go into uh, a, a male can be toxic feminine too, which would be then into the, they're more submissive. They're, they aren't, um, uh, they don't strive. They don't uh, go up the ladder in career. They're, they're um, more super agreeable. So they don't ask for promotions. They're not um, ambitious. Uh, they don't take the lead. So th those are very not attractive to women uh, a lot of the time. And then like there's like terms such as simp, uh, which is like people so coming to the, the, the you know, whatever, the, the thoughts uh, on online that, that have the army of men and then they, 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 <laughs> they control them. And it's pretty fun me to watch that. But anyway, and um, that's like I'd say toxic feminine that's held by a man. Uh, and then you know cucks and there's all these words for like that and, oh and, cuck holds okay and, uh, like and and then like people that are addicted to porn would also be another thing and um addiction uh slave or or uh, uh, uh like being that like being dominated or like having slaves etc could be a, like a polarization for toxic feminine and and again uh, women can have also toxic masculinity so the ones that go into you can call this toxic feminine uh, a lot of the you know manosphere and all that talk called it toxic femininity but i'd say it's a feminine holding toxic masculinity traits because they had to just strive to to grow and they they got to be in that aggressive market and sometimes that's needed and beneficial but also can unbalance them from their what they're naturally emanating uh and that sometimes it can be good to increase their masculine with what they need and every activity can either decrease or degrade or increase their masculine and feminine internally into divinity so it depends on your choices in that and how sacred you are in it and to to integrate those parts of yourself and become more whole and you know some and that also like the people that aren't uh going along with the traditionalism uh will have uh charisma like david bowie as an example uh, so there's like people that uh shine their bright light through this so it's not like all negative or anything sometimes they need it uh so it would be like modes of like expression in what they want to put out in the hat each day in their integration of their masculine and feminine the activities that they're portraying in that that and and if that's acceptable or not acceptable to others and uh being out in the world you're up to judgment it's not like something it's not really reasonable to ask that people can't judge you because the people are judging all the time it's good it's good to not automatically hate somebody in your judgment and to see yourself in at what would it be like if you were them in your shoes with their experiences which would be different and that they had to get to that way which is not easy to put yourself in that mindset but it's a good thing that i like doing um with the feminine uh you know the, so a lot of the hijacking of the fem feminist movement uh towards making women more masculine and uh which can cause if they give up their feminine entirely can cause cancerous or illness effects so the same thing with masculine so there, there's there's something to this that can cause illness but um that's for people to look out for um to uh they could be like too submissive which is the fe the toxic feminine trait in the right brain imbalance it'd be more feminine uh which would go into uh, you know creativity and spirituality so somebody could be too spiritual uh, or religiously indoctrinated or um in a cult 
or believe anything or anything that comes to them right away without uh scientific or grounding um uh so like the airy fairy kind of thing like a lot of this stuff exists because i go into this but uh people can without much evidence that would be the the brain imbalance as well as overwhelmed with emotions uh let the emotions build up until they explode same thing with uh sexual energy being emotionally and sexually manipulative and men can do this too but honestly most men i know aren't that smart uh, at it and most of them <laughs> have gotten their understanding from how women are, are really good at it naturally uh so <laughs> women are like masters at emotional and sexual manipulation and we we learn from having you know that experience um then uh yeah, it's kind of hard to see a man as being like hey you know <laughs> and and you just being like okay <laughs> but guys i mean you could sit behind a dumpster and, and be like hey <laughs> they're like oh for real i can get it like you know what I'm like, <laughs> like damn okay it's just that easy just put a box in the stick and then damn it's like okay <laughs> crap <laughs> I'm serious, because I can see some people, some guys sometimes, and I'm like, you did what? Mm. And you're you're like, oh, God. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, well, well said. Uh, like Bugs Bunny or some shit. <laughs> right. Um, so then, mm, yeah. uh, so with the left brain balance, like, locks people in and being mm -hmm, skeptical, mm -hmm. not being able to see, not being able to dance or grow spiritually. Uh, there's, like, in the imbalance of spirituality and what one can emotionally experience so that then leads to the concept of delusion which men can experience too as i've been exp I experienced early on when i had my empathy turned all the way on it was hard to determine what was reality um and then like discernment through that mm. And so, like, as men can be too closed off, women can, uh, in, or, and again, everyone can do every. So the, the toxic feminine would be the, then the unbalancing of that, which would be too open, and that can be like uh, stressed all the time and dra a drama coming in and uh, anxiety flaring up at the at a mouse's fart uh, in the room, uh, you know. Uh, and then, like, there's like things with crazy. Um, I'd say there's there can be both um, um, left brain and right brain crazy. Um, I'm still kind of defining because it's it's um, and I, I think the word crazy is dismissive. It doesn't like give a, a picture of like what the person's going through, but they're mm -hmm. you know still people. There are things that you can listen to come out of somebody's mouth, like a, a home, uh, you walk through like New York and there are some people dressed all crazy and then. Uh, uh, they're like spewing some things and then just that that word just pops in your head i think so. that's it because it's beyond description and you're like you, you can't you're like i can't fathom it so you you can't come up with another way to describe it yeah yeah exactly beyond. Then, right so then there's like believers of whatever uh like just comes to them so there's like uh accepting and too agreeableness and uh being too submissive to a dominator like abuse victims that don't want to get out and then excuse the uh, masculine for abusing them oh you don't know who they're like alone with me and then you, you, you don't you don't know what they're really like and, and then they you know make excuses in their mind because of the domination and they just let it happen more and more so there's like a two, two to tango thing with that and there's like past life and who, who their environment and what they're allowing and they're growing up that has to do with that too um, and their need to regain their power back so that because they they're insecure they don't don't see themselves highly they, they don't think they're worthy of anyone better so there's a lot a lot to that that's that also men can have too um in the toxic feminine then i'd say there's also like uh, a misandry is the the polarization of the the hating men uh, so the uh, misogynist where men hate women misandry hate uh men uh so there's also that uh yeah i, I, I this that'd be i mine. didn't even know that word misandry so i love that thirst traps i love <laughs> <laughs> i love like i have to go back and like oh i got new words 
<laughs> but yeah. Wow. Well, so you, yeah, it was cool because you, you, you really have put some research into this male female, um, the differences. And I think we need these definitions and terms at this time because it's a huge trap to put us into a war between the sexes. And, and they even call it that, right? The war of the sexes and all that bullshit, you know? So, and, and it's so funny because as spiritual people, like people who are supposed to be spiritual anyway, that we still slip. And sometimes I think we need to understand that the programming is so deep. We have to consistently be evaluating our thoughts just to see is this even real or is this a part of the illusion that we've been programmed to think is real this you know we have these levels of programming are so deep like i could just be sitting here and be like dang i want a chicken sandwich do i really want a chicken sandwich or did something just pop up on my screen and, and trigger me or did the color red and white trigger me like we're we're manipulated so far beyond. And even though we're in a state of healing, like we don't realize that there's so, so many other layers underneath. And we think like, oh, I'm almost there. I've devoured my ego. And it's like, nah, it's all still there. <laughs> and like you say, at least you acknowledge and admit, these are things you have to work on on a daily basis. You're like addressing yourself on a daily basis and constantly looking in the mirror. And I like to use biblical terms. Like the guy that looks in the mirror and doesn't know what he looks like. Some of us, that's how we're functioning on that level. Like, oh, you think you're special? You think you're different? You think you don't have the same challenges as other human beings and that you just made it? Then you're freaking lost. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, beautifully said. Yeah, thank you for bringing that term too. Uh, the war of the sexes, that's like a big thing that our culture. Yeah. Elite. Terry started it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, i've seen a game a board game called the war of the sexes too and the really? battle of sexes. yeah it's crazy but um yeah all these elites um they, there's books about it like the prince machiavellism like how how do you control a nation you got to divide the people and get them pit against each other so they're too distracted to to figure out that who's the the asshole that's pitting them against each other and stealing all their wealth uh so yeah, they, they, they divide us through religions, the sexes, the belief systems, uh, parties, the all, all this. Um, it's, it's right. There's, and there's I like to tell people that, like, here you got Obama and then you got Hillary and they're like, she's a woman. And, she, you know, and then you got, oh, but he's black. And, and so then they got people pumped up on both sides and then they get them to both shake hands. And all they've done is what they do to cattle is, get these dogs to bark on the right, get these dogs to bark on the right, on the left, and then merge you all together into one big group caring about some shit that you've never really cared about before. It's just this huge, massive level of manipulation. So mm -hmm. yeah, and most things when it comes to any type of arguments, I think it's all a fucking scam. And somebody wants you to say their name out loud and they want you to give them, this is a scam. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and, and we're we're like, the experiment of made in thy image so of the gods and the, you know in in, in whole uh singular uh, not singularity but do uh you know multiple gods and they say in the bible so like we're a map of the entire universe everything we see is a reflection of ourself in this mirror of the injures web and dew drops of every experience so we learn we if we open ourselves to that we can learn from everything as a teacher and, and not necessarily like uh, believe everything they bring to us as a lesson but like still it's a lesson um and so these uh things of dividing and all the camps and the the tribalism and the republican democrat it, the republican is more like left brain and uh uh, conservating where like protection mode their the their biggest darkness is their ego um which is to survival protect and and prevent things from harming the the, the light they have still going and the the left is i'd say like more right brain more open more into spirit open to spirituality a lot of the witches are in, involved in that but they're also uh 
in, interacting their greatest darkness is the shadow so like i see them throwing ego and shadow at each other in combat uh and so there's like a shadow work with what a lot of is coming out with the culture of the left where they're like wanting us to accept things that would otherwise not be easily acceptable to the the republican uh christianized belief um so it's like they can either you know dark the dark shadow has strategies they're mostly just wanting the shot uh you know darkness wants to just overcome a being with the shadow and, and convert them over but uh, we can also use it to do shadow work to integrate those aspects of ourselves we don't accept about ourselves and love them and heal them and, and and then uh turn them to light and then that affects the rest of the world so we can uh flip the hate we have for everything that that comes up against us that we don't um like and then we can cultivate love for it and then it will have a power to change it and the same thing with the ego we can uh, heal that ego so that it feels safe enough to uh not let its shielding down and, and control so that the light can shine greater um and then balance those polarities and it's like, like the same with the left and the right brain us china and russia the hemispheres of the earth and bring them all to balance and the ego and the shadow to like each other and uh, there there's things in the gender and um war of the sexes that have happened to get everyone to fight against each other i'd like to ask what you have found out that make um women hate men as well as what you've seen uh with men hating women uh with what i've experienced with men hating women it's like a pass down trauma from uh people around them and like <laughs> A bros or like their father figure that like gets them to dominate and like see women as objects and then uh, like thing uh and then with the the women have i've mostly seen them hate uh turn out to hate men is there's like a statistical study that uh in surveying uh women in the dating market taken from multiple dating sites of like uh the dating pool of where uh what women and men are attracted to and how many times they swipe right or whatever on tinder and, and all that and like uh, men swipe right like 50 percent or around the, uh, of the time and women swipe right uh right eight percent of the time so they're more picky and so all the women are going after the top 20 percent of men and these top 20 percent of men are like the alphas that uh get have lots of options they're like making lots of money they look really good they're like the chads and the tyrones and they're uh they are pretty toxic because they can be because they have so many options and since uh all the women are going after that top 20 percent of men when they have the wounds from them because they don't want to commit at all uh they <laughs> they uh you know you betray them and they don't give them attention and then they this mess up is a life. whole nother like this is a whole nother good time Sean. that's a right, whole so nother good time i'm gonna say this though women have created a category for themselves and a place for themselves that actually devalues themselves because if a woman bases all her values on her boobs and her ass and you know what she can do in bed you've actually devalued yourself by placing yourself in that category which is the actual category they put themselves in when they market themselves. Because on most of the apps, I've gone on as a man to look at what men get to see when they are on the fucking app and it is absolutely disgusting. And I'll, I'm looking at and I'm like, holy shit, no wonder you can't get a date on the fucking app because bitches got their titties all the way out. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're like, you know, it's all the way out. So while you're thinking you're doing something with your picture, with your diploma, or in front of a sunset or some shit, right. guys are looking at other stuff like, what? You practically look like you're giving a banana a blowjob while you're on the fucking app. And so now you're like totally basing your value mostly on just basically your looks and some superficial qualities 
and you're literally devaluing yourself and you're picking, like you say, the, you could consider them the top whatever percent because maybe they're buffed out or look a certain way or, or have a certain job, but you're allowing yourself what it, it, I guess it just all boils down to what we allow ourselves to take. Now, there was an incident where there was a basketball player, an NBA player who beat his girlfriend up in the elevator and people were looking at her like, oh, she stayed with them. She chose that fucking life based strictly on what? What she could get out of this guy, the clout and the money. So she takes a certain level of abuse based on what she can get from him. So if she gets choked out in the elevator, it really is not that big a deal to her because she wanted clout and money. And so based on what you want out of a person, if you want love and security or whatever it is, then you're not going to go around picking these people that you're picking. And you can pick up really easy on what it is that that person has to offer when a woman is looking at a man based on the fucking conversation that they have. And if the conversation starts out with what you have on or your underwear or, you know, what you like to do in bed is the first bit of conversation you have. If you continue to go further in that conversation, then that's what you chose for yourself. That's where you put yourself. And that's basically what you're going to get. Just like any situation where a woman is being abused or being mistreated or anybody who's at a job where their abuse are getting mistreated, people only do what you fucking allow them to do. Now, if you go around speaking your truth and being a whole person, people are, you know, the guys that are like this are going to be like, I don't want that bitch. She talks too much or she's saying too much or she's thinking too hard. They go, <laughs> they're not going to be attracted to you if your conversation is really about what you think about life and what you feel. And so you're automatically going to eliminate those type of people from around you. Some of them are going to be attracted to you because they're going to think like, oh, they can fake it for a while and they're going to do the fake it till you make it thing. But if you're really paying attention to the conversation and the person is like, oh, yeah, I think that too. Oh, yeah, I think that too, which I've been a victim of that before where people are just basically just they're trying to hold on to their life and they can't keep up even in the conversation. And you're going to figure that out, too, if you're paying attention and if that's what you want. Or if you're really just focused on, you know, oh, this person has a house car, you know, oh, whatever kind of sex, whatever. You're going to see it if you want to see it. And if you don't see it, it's because you don't want to. And you're only going to get what you allow yourself to receive. And if what you allow is abuse, you're going to get abuse. If you want neglect, you're going to get that. You know, like if you allow for neglect, that's what you're going to get.